Now, I have to confess that I don't watch that much TV, really, and I hardly ever watch the CBC. Their comedies are generally lame and lamentably safe and derivative. Their news coverage isn't that bad, but it's usually very one-sided and tendentious. And their drama, oh, come on, it's just, just appalling. And none of this should matter, really, when it comes to TV choice, because if you don't like it, well, don't watch it. Problem is, problem is, with a CBC, you don't have to watch it, but you do have to pay for it. Billions of dollars, actually. Now, spare me the nonsense that Sun News is now playing that game. It's not true. All we have been given is the ability to compete on a level playing field with the other non-CBC news channels, as opposed to trying to compete against them with a huge anchor around our necks. Is it a question of uh, quality? Well, to a degree. Britain's BBC is also publicly funded and also clearly left of centre, but its international news coverage in particular, and its comedies and dramas, has to be said, they're extraordinary. But back to the, the CBC. Men used to run away to sea. Now they run away to the CBC. I suppose I did in a way, because my first job when I married a Canadian and came here to live back in 1987 was at, yeah, I know, surprising, the CBC. The show was Man Alive. It was 790 Bay Street in Toronto, the office, and uh, that was before the huge and incredibly costly CBC building was constructed. That, by the way, is in liberal red, which is no surprise, as the first thing I saw when I came to work back in 1987 was a, a large Liberal Party poster on the wall. What did I know? I'm not going to devote much time here to trying to establish bias at the CBC. If you're not aware of it, you're either so numbed down to the propaganda that your senses are corrupted, or you so agree with the CBC line that you can't see it as propaganda anymore. Nor is it that many of the reporters there even regard themselves as lacking in objectivity. They don't. It's simply that they're a little callow, have never really been exposed to other opinions, and they're, and they're centred and centric around the urban downtown and around liberal opinion, especially on social and moral issues. Aha, and of course, when it comes to the Middle East, well, have a look at this uh, local Jewish leader. It's positively painful. It's, uh, it's disappointing when a reporter gives in to propaganda and actually believes the uh, anti-Israel propaganda. I was just asked a question, what about the so-called hundreds of thousands of people who have been killed by the uh, Israelis? It's, that's a question that was just posed by, by the national uh, CBC reporter. And I answered her that it's propaganda. This doesn't happen. And there's freedom of movement, freedom of religion in Israel. And that does not happen in Islamic countries. And you know, what he said it can be repeated time and time again. Or the CBC can be so clumsy in its defense of its heroes and its attempt to obfuscate and disguise the truth but it's much, much funnier, actually, than its comedy shows. Well, this is a report from uh, Sun uh, TV News Network. Uh, allegations based on uh, an unnamed Toronto police officer was their source, who gave them, uh, I guess, some notes from uh, uh, 1996 when Sun TV reports that Jack Layden was in a suspected body house, essentially a massage parlor, uh, in downtown Toronto. Um, so that sort of it came out very late yesterday and uh, forced the NDP camp to react very quickly and, and go into uh, an aspect of damage control. Now, I should point out that there were no charges ever laid and that according to Leighton and his wife, Olivia Chow, who's also running in this election, uh, this massage clinic was in fact registered uh, with the city of Toronto and that police uh, simply told Leighton that there had been allegations of potential wrongdoing at this place and so they suggested to him that he should stay away. <laughs> Those little clips that were on the top, they weren't from the CBC. Naked Chinese immigrant girl who was massaging. And did you see the, the, uh, the legal, very special and rather posh massage parlor? That was just CBC propaganda defending one of their own. Which brings me to my friend, Jonathan Kay, Jonathan Kay of the National Post. John is one of the most intelligent and balanced writers we have in Canada. I, I admire him very much. That doesn't, though, mean I always agree with him. And he will certainly understand and respect me when I say that I don't. Unlike so many Canadian journalists, he actually believes in freedom of speech. But he said this. There have been a few gaffes, and I think Trudeau, you know, he's a guy who loves to speak from the heart. He's got to be conscious of the fact that politics is often about the three or four seconds of your two-hour speech that maybe is off the cuff. 
He's got to also be conscious that, you know, Sun News has basically become a research department for the government. And so everything he says that possibly is off script is going to be seized upon by that small network and is going to be exploited and to make him look bad. Oh, John, I, I love you. You're a great guy. You're extremely deep. You're a profound thinker. But please, research department for the government. I've hosted this particular show for what must be more than two years now. And at no time have I had any contact with the government. I've not been told what to say and do by them. And I frequently oppose them on various and numerous policy issues. A better and more accurate way to describe us would be to say we will not drink at the fountain of Justin worship. And instead, we'll, we'll expose his many gaffes and ask if such a naive and shallow fellow is ready for prime time and prime minister. Compare this with the obsessive anti-Harper antics of the CBC and the Toronto Star and the rest of them. It would surely be more accurate to describe the CBC as the research department of the Liberal Party with a nice little annex at the side devoted to the NDP. The late Peter Zowski, remember him, the doyen of CBC host, he once told a friend, a friend of his and an acquaintance of mine, I would never appear on his radio show to discuss my books, even if they were bestsellers and published internationally. Why, asked this friend, my source, because, the saintly Peter replied, he's a right winger who opposes abortion and same-sex marriage. <laughs> In what way did that affect my biographies of H.G. Wells or Conan Doyle? Given, forgive me, rave reviews in the Times of London and the New Yorker. Well, none at all. And that's the point. It's a story that could be repeated a thousand times. Bias, lack of balance, tendentious reporting, closed-mindedness, sham, all mobbed up with your money. Let's all do some research. Please, the more, the merrier. Yeah, I, I, I'm not the guy on this station who goes on about the CBC quite a lot. Maybe some other people here do. I've got no idea. But I will speak truth to power and, and not give a damn about the consequences. Uh, Simon Kent is another one like that, I think. Sun News contributor. The, the C, I'm not here to bash the CBC as such, but when they get it wrong so often, when they have so many millions of dollars of public money, we, we, we've got not a, a right but a duty to speak out. Let me just make myself comfortable with my wallet here because there's stuff full <laughs> of dollars before I came in the door from the government. Because, of course, you and I are such handsomely well-paid spokespeople we for the government yep. and, and do all their research for them. But... Um, the CBC is also spectacularly well funded with our dollars, with taxpayer dollars, mm. and they shouldn't have the indulgence to have so many of the errant and, and um, plainly wrong uh, views and positions that they take, especially when they're arguing uh, when it comes to politics. The default position is always protect Justin, protect Justin, yeah. protect Justin. Um, that shouldn't be the default position. They should bring some intellect intellectual toughness and rigour to um, their reporting. To everyone, whatever their party. Yes. I want to ask you about the international comparisons. Mm. You're from Australia. Yeah. Um, I know Ireland pretty well. I was in mm. Britain very well. State broadcasters seem to replicate this behaviour wherever they are. In Ireland, very much um, uh, it, it's a, a liberal approach, the yes. state broadcaster. The BBC, high quality, but again, mm. the same sort of politics. But I've worked for the BBC World Service and, 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 and in radio, and I, I must admit I did find them very, very good. Mm. That is a really banner organisation. That, show, yeah. that shows how you can do things really well. But as you were saying about internationally, I look at the, the ABC in Australia, the yeah. Australian Broadcasting Corporation, they suffer from the same criticism because they're often seen their default position on everything is soft left, go left mm. all the time. And there's such a paucity of, of opinions, which is really a shame because if they're going to take all taxpayer dollars, you'd like to think they represent all views in the community. It's not just the section that is a soft left. There should also be voices right across the political spectrum. And, and I look at the, uh, the, a the Australian ABC and the criticism it gets. It's very similar to what the CBC gets here. For goodness yeah. sake, have opinions, have strong views, but you can also spread them out without suffering unless you're, you're so worried about what your peers think because you're entertaining other views. Heaven forbid you should, should have a, an mm. approach that is... Um, uh, right across the political spectrum. I have never quite understood this idea of controlling opinion because I, I find life much more enjoyable when, when there's, mm. there's more debate, more When it's more a diversity. contest of ideas. Yeah, but the CBC approach seems to be that, that, that Canada is composed of um, very left-wing Tory, uh, fairly mainstream liberal, and even the NDP are given a hard time, mm. frankly. There's a mm. few, they have the, these icons like Jack But in Mason. a softy sort of... Yeah, but, it, but so, you know, so Andrew Coyne is a conservative. Well, 
talk about the pulse of society. <laughs> I'm not sure if he even has his own individual pulse. But it, 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 it's, so, it's bland. Mm. And, and this blandness, sometimes fairly intelligent blandness, but there's nothing exciting. And it doesn't really represent genuine and Canada. it doesn't push back ideas, does it? It doesn't challenge people because it just repeats the same old, same old stuff. And, and, and it's very much beige. It's just it's, everything's covered beige and everything is beige in its approach. Mm. But for goodness sake, bring a contest of ideas, a contest of, of challenges, an intellectual challenge, and maybe some intellectual rigour. And don't forget that as a public broadcaster, you have a, a real responsibility to, to represent a whole widespread uh, well, but, uh, but, but of ideas. Do you, I would mm. suggest, yes. yeah, I would demand that you do have that responsibility, mm. but you know that's not reflected in the CBC. I know that, and uh, it, uh, I, in your monologue, in your opening piece, you talked about the, the, the failure of, of, of news to represent that, but also drama and things like that, which some of it is, you're quite right, truly appalling. Oh, it, oh, it's dreadful. And it doesn't travel. And that's why you don't see it anywhere else in the world, because it's not fit for showing anywhere else outside this and country. And when it is sold abroad, and we're told here, this is sold internationally, having grown up which in another means... country, it means midnight. <laughs> yes. It means midnight when they'll show something when no one is watching. I don't expect it to be a BBC mm. quality, mm. Uh, but there's no reason why, in a, in a smaller scale, it couldn't be more like some of the stuff that comes out of public broadcasting in the United States some of the smaller networks but it doesn't it doesn't but that mean doesn't mean it shouldn't because the funding is there the money is there whoever is choosing the scripts whoever makes the intellectual and ideological uh, decisions about positions on what they should be doing that's where the fault lies but ultimately the CBC is a great conduit for thought debate and good strong thinking if only it would switch away from that default position always go beige always go soft left always go liberal and when it comes to Justin Trudeau protect Justin at all costs they shouldn't be that mouthpiece and they're our dollars they're our taxpayer dollars going to fund that uh, there's a lot more ideas out there and, and the marketplace of ideas is one that should be mined and trawled and challenged at all times not just reflective of one point of view mm -hmm. You know, Open-mindedness uh, makes for a far more vibrant and challenging life. And, and of course, the irony is that many people who despise us will say, you're not, you're not open-minded. We are open-minded, but we, we don't confuse that with being empty-headed. No, and I think you'll find a great diversity of opinion right across this network, across Sun News, uh, reflective yeah. of a whole lot of different range of opinions and people who agree to disagree. I think that's the essence of really good, strong yeah. intellectual debate, and there should be more of it. And I just yeah. really don't see the CBC fulfilling that charter. Appreciate it. Thank you. Pleasure.